Great. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you to the three of you telling us all the wisdom. I, I, Kat, I don't know what you're worried about. Everything you say is full of gold mine of information along, <laughs> alongside Trent and Jamie. And it's really helpful to have different perspectives and different sort of tendencies of which software to use. Because let me try and summarize. Jamie has basically made himself a Zoom expert and it took a bit of time and a bit of kit, but he's there and it, and it shows. Trent is a behind the scenes producer. Is that, is that technically the right word, Trent? Or would you prefer director? Probably producer. Yeah, either or is fine. But so as a person who's not appearing on the screen, but still making sure everyone else appears on the screen at the right time and in the right place, super important. And Kat is handling a much more education centered, Google oriented sort of classroom and has found loads of tools that help her do that as she wants to do it. Um, and I would call myself a little bit of a Google fanboy, but there's still three things that I uh, have got and I'm just gonna go and play with all the rest of this afternoon straight from Kat. There've been lots of questions coming through. Um, there still might be some coming in the chat. I'll try and keep an eye on that. Although I'm gonna ask the other hosts just to keep an eye on any particularly important questions that come in. Now I've started talking and can't read and talk at the same time. Um, a question possibly for Trent, Jamie or Kat, whoever wants to answer this. Um, we've talked about the differences between Skype and Zoom, for example, but there's another important difference to highlight, which is the difference between those two things maybe Google Meet in that list as well, and separately streaming things, which is using Skype and Zoom to send something maybe to a YouTube live stream. So I wonder if, uh, Jamie, could you mention, um, you do meetings in Zoom, but that's not the same as streaming things. T can you give us any thoughts about that? Um, so I've, I've done both. So I um, got my Zoom account, got used to using Zoom, familiar with it. I then wanted to stream something. So I thought, well, I'll upgrade to Zoom webinars, uh, which I did, and that's £32 a month. Uh, which is quite steep, I think. So that allows you to have 100 people in a webinar. But then I decided for what I was using, I could just put it on YouTube for free. Uh, yeah. So you can stream a Zoom meeting. Uh, so for me, like Zoom webinars wasn't required for what I was trying to do. And so now I'm trying to kind of pair Zoom up with YouTube. And so when I'm streaming stuff, that's what I'm using. Be, and that for me is because I'm wanting a, a large audience. There's not going to be a huge amount of questions or dialogue. It's about people watching the outputs that I'm making. Uh, gotcha. So for me, uh, curating it in Zoom or as Trent says, on Skype, but then uh, through into YouTube, which is a nice free streaming platform. Thank you, Jamie. That, that kind of answers what I'm... Can I ask the same thing to Trent? I understand that you are using Skype as a sort of back-end feed into something which you push out via streaming. Are you streaming via YouTube and Vimeo at the same time, did you say? Yeah, so we can go to as many as we need to. YouTube and Twitch are the main two we go to, but any streaming platforms you can go to out of, out of our bit of mixing software, but you can do it through stuff like Streamlabs or OBS as well. And then with, depending on the different tier levels you subscribe to and pay for on something like Restream, you can go to as many platforms as you need to. YouTube is great with Restream for the, one of the higher ends. If you're doing something for someone that needs to go on four YouTube channels at the same time, maybe you've got four speakers and they all want it on their YouTube channel at the same time, you can pump it out to those four channels all at the same time and it doesn't eat your bandwidth. It takes out the whatever you pay for bandwidth on Restream. Okay, so I think it's taken me a bit of time to get my head around it, but the difference between a meeting piece of software like Zoom, Google Meet, Skype essentially, and then using those bits of software to collect feeds from different places and send them out to a, a broadcast or a stream depends on the use. And so Kat, maybe you could just comment that you're using the first of those much more because you're in a teaching environment. You need more interaction. Is that true? Yes, yeah, definitely. Um... You want to be able to see what the students are doing and get responses yeah. from them. And playing with comp combining the two sounds like great advice. So you now know three people to go and ask about particular things. Question, uh, which was kind of answered, but let's do it quickly to Jamie from uh, Richard Pinch, I think about the cost of some of the kit that you bought. Uh, quick summary of some of the bits you bought and rough costs. Most expensive was the camera um, because the DSLR I had here didn't uh, wasn't able to connect via USB. In all, I have spent about a thousand pounds, but that is also including stuff that I already had. So, like using my podcasting microphone. So, a um, thousand pounds for the kit, but it wasn't all just uh, bought for this. It was bits and pieces I had in the house anyway. And things that will remain useful even after yeah, this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, I've, I don't know if anyone else has been the same, but buying stuff online uh, during lockdown is an occupational hazard of being stuck in front of a computer all day, it seems. And, uh, headsets and mics and mixing desks and things are legitimate purchases if, uh, if you have any revenue still coming in to get them. Uh, question then for 
Trent, uh, lots of, uh, you were chatting about OBS and everyone's been mentioning OBS. We've got details in our document about what OBS is. It's free. It's a great mixing piece of software. Trent, you're not using it. What are you using and how much does that cost? And is it prohibitively expensive or worth uh, the difference? Yes. Essentially, we're a bit like Jamie. We've got a lot of stuff already. So we've got a home studio that we make all the Cosmic Shambles stuff with anyway. So we've right. got, you know, like many thousands of pounds of kit kind of already in here, which means we can build some stuff out of the editing software and broadcast software we've already got. But what we do is essentially build our own version of OBS. Okay. <laughs> so um, OBS does like 85% of what I'm doing anyway. And what okay. I, what I really like about OBS is it's quite basic in itself, but it's very receptive to lots of different plugins. So yeah, that's what I unless found. you're using zoom on a Mac, you can <laughs> usually find something that you can plug into and attach to OBS that will make it do what you want it to do. Okay, so short answer is if you're starting out, try OBS. If you're on yeah. a Mac, you may have issues getting the virtual cam thing going. Uh, talk to or people. Streamlabs like is, I don't know how much it is, but it's not that expensive and it kind of overcomes some of those hurdles as well. Good. For what it's worth, uh, if Darren, I've just found a button I can click in OBS and I've now got two cameras going, which has confused the heck out of me. But it is that e if I can press the button now, it is that easy. Um, if we have time at the end, uh, Katie and I are going to share a couple of things we've been trying with that. A uh, question I had for Kat. Um, Equatio, people, people are surprised about Equatio in the, in the chat box. Some people knew about it already and some people didn't. Uh, we're very excited about it. I haven't seen any more stuff come in. But uh, I just tried installing it without going through your form. Is it is it actually free or do you, do you normally have to pay for it if you don't go through that form? You normally have to, so currently it's free for teachers for a year and it's, no, it's free for teachers, sorry. And schools are being are allowed to give it to their pupils during COVID-19 for free. Um, but usually you have to pay a license to be able to use it completely. Okay. Um, and get all the good features. Uh, I'm not so, sure what the limits are to the free version, but I have a feeling it's quite a lot of limits in there. Okay, so I think I probably just installed the free version by clicking buttons while trying to host a meeting. Bad idea, Ben. Uh, but it's, if you want to get the full thing, yeah. So if you want to get the full thing, we can go through your form link. Yes, yeah, and it just gets linked to your email address. So whatever email address you put in that form, Patrick will put it in the list of people who get to use a crochet. Um, it's as simple as that. Uh, and they're really nice guys. They actually, if anyone teaches English, they do a good accessibility tool called Read and Write, which has right. got dyslexia screens and things like that. Sorry, my son has decided to join us. This is William. Your son is allowed to join us. Well, literally, can't, we can't stop him. So, <laughs> Hi, William. Just um, in his car. I am aware that while I was hosting questions, listening to answers, I haven't been monitoring the chat as much as I was. Uh, if anyone in the hosting group wants to point out other good questions, I've got a few more to go through. But if I, if I missed any in the chat, Sam, Katie or Kevin? while they're checking what else did i want to ask um can i just handling... say sorry to something that Trent. katie asked in the chat about dealing with video fatigue mm. and dealing with tech ups while you're presenting and stuff um we obviously cheat by having a host essentially that is always good for when someone's camera goes down we have a robin Ince who can talk for seven weeks if we need to fill but with something like OBS or Streamlabs or whatever, if you're not just going direct through Zoom, you can build in hold screens and tech difficulty screens and little bits of video demos and stuff yeah. from other shows. So if something dies, you can just cut into a, a hold screen and says, we'll be back in five minutes. Or if you've got a friend who's a musician, we have lots of bands on, have them record a couple of songs and just fill that Transfer in to give video. people a break to go and have a coffee or something. So with using streaming software, you can just again make a little bit of a show and build in that kind of stuff to help people out yeah it is interesting how obvious they make buttons like emergency so i can just click fade to black and like if, if i need to get undressed quickly then i can do that um i'm not doing that before you but with the the bro transitioning from a camera in a meeting thing to a broadcasting software is a big step up but it gives you that functionality because that's what people like trent need all the time great thank you trent um there was a question there which is good uh, maybe it's to Trent, but also I guess it applies to Jamie and Ken how you deal with it. But if you are using broadcasting software to mix everything, um, you are not really paying attention to chat and comments, particularly if there's a delay between what you're doing and where it ends up live. So how do you handle live comments in a meeting or a stream? And does it need to be a specific person sort of separate from the producer? Uh, 
my answer is I do both um, because there's only one of me. So I kind of half monitor the live chat and um, mix as well. But we've also got Melinda, who is the other producer in Cosmic Shambles, is also my wife. So she is usually in the other room. <laughs> That helps. Um, and a lot of the time she's watching the show and talking to people in the live chat and doing stuff as well. And we, I also then keep the presenters away from the live chat. So Robin and Josie or Brian or whoever it is, can't see the live chat. And then if there's any questions, I can filter them and get the ones that are relevant to them so they can. And you send them by text to the, the, the live speakers then? Yeah, we have a, a presenter WhatsApp group as well, so they can okay. have WhatsApp open on their screen and they're getting questions and stuff through there. That's the sort of practical implementation, implementation I was thinking, like how do you actually, if someone needs to curate the questions, then how do they get to them? Uh, Jamie and Kat, anything to comment on that? We are running short of time, so this is towards the end of our Q&A time. But... I was just going to say, when I'm doing my mental health chats, I always have a second teacher who is there to monitor the chat. And while I do try and keep an eye on it myself, it's ha handy to have a second person. And we were talking about the doorbell on Meet. So yeah. my second person does the doorbell and the chat monitoring while I host and keep an eye on what people are asking. Can Google Meet have two hosts then to do that? Um, it's been changing so rapidly. I genuinely oh, yeah. have lost track. So what I actually, I have to admit, I have a second account I use called meeting.host. Um, and we share the password and you can have multiple, multiple people logged in on the same account. So we tend to have ah, two or three of us okay. on meeting.host. That'll be interesting to know whether Google Meet can let more than one person log in and have the host privileges. But that's things to go and to play with. And if, uh, if you want to talk to Kat more about that, she's our expert Google person to get in touch with. Jamie, any yeah, comments about how you handle comments? Google Hangouts. And then they yeah, really it. quickly. So I, I, uh, everything I do, trip. I'm just on my own. So like virtually social can be up to 150 people uh, at any one time, which is a lot for me to kind of look at the comments. Um, two things I do that, that help have that. So I've got as terms of saying kind of cutaways so maybe i'll go to another speaker while not someone else is speaking i can then read through the comments and the other really really useful thing that i do um is when i'm doing things like a news roundup that has lots of links to external stories i ask someone who's going to be in that meeting uh, I, I email them a list of the links that i'm going to be talking about and i ask them to share those links while i'm talking so um i i can just concentrate on delivery and i know that someone else is putting the correct comments alongside what i'm saying uh, and that's a really, really easy thing to do and a really helpful thing. Brilliant. Thank you, Jamie. Well, I think we, we are almost out of time. We are aware that we can stick around a little bit after four, but we want to finish kind of at four. One thing we wanted to share is that if people want to play while in a Zoom meeting, we'll, we'll stick around a bit after four. We could possibly go into breakout rooms if needed, but we are going to finish at four. There are a couple of things, I think, Katie, uh, that we wanted to share before we finished. Um, yeah, Katie, so do you want to say a bit about that? I think if, if anyone does need to head off, um, like me and Ben have, have put together a few things that we can show you, but we've also typed a lot of this information into a shared Google Doc. Uh, we're doing this slightly risky thing that we did last week as well, which is this is editable by everyone. Um, but the idea is that if there is a particular piece of software that you found useful or a platform or anything that you've discovered about one of these bits of software, like, oh, I tried using it for this and you know this was a problem or whatever, um, this can be kind of edited collaboratively. So I'll put the link. Um, oh, Sam's put the link in the chat. We're so organized. Uh, Sam's put the link in the chat, but this is a document of useful things about video online generally. Uh, so there's a section for different video call platforms with pros and cons. So Zoom, uh, Google Meet and Skype are the three main ones that we've covered there. Um, there's also a section on mixing software. So things like OBS, uh, the one that I used called ManyCam, um, there's a few others as well, and Ecamm Live that uh, Jamie's mentioned. Um, there's uh, some, I've put in a section about things like Jamboard that you can use for writing on, which maybe other people could fill in. I have very little experience of that stuff. Um, and also IP cameras, which is a way to use a phone in the way that Jamie's doing as a webcam as well. So if you don't want to invest in another webcam, you can use like a phone or tablet as a camera. Um, and then there's some other bits there about screen sharing, about using PowerPoint with video calls and a bit about adding subtitles and accessibility. Because I think with all of this, it's important to try and build in accessibility from the, from the beginning, basically think about this as well as all the other stuff. You know, how are people going to access this? What kind of barriers do I need to think about? Um, so all of that information is in the doc. You're very welcome to edit it. Please try not to delete large swathes of information by accident. Uh, there is an undo button if that happens. Uh, but if there is anything you want to add, if you want to add another entire section about, you know, online poll software or whatever it is you found useful, 
um, and, and different options for that, then please, please do. Uh, and we'll try and keep that updated and we'll share that again, uh, you know, with next week, we'll put a link on our website to people, uh, for people to find that information. But we're hoping that's something you'll find useful. Uh, but Ben and I can actually demonstrate a couple of the things uh, just on the, the very simple kind of, much like Jamie, kind of learning as we go level that we've uh, discovered things. Uh, but if anyone does need to go, I realise this is the problem with video calls. You always sort of feel awkward leaving. Uh, this is the break point. Uh, if you want to disappear off, thank you very much for coming. We hope you'll join us next week. We've got these sessions going on for six weeks. Uh, have a look at the team at website for details of what the other sessions are going to be. Um, I'm going to have to go, but thank you very much for having me, everyone. And um, yeah, hopefully it was useful. Thank you, okay. Kat. Thank you, Jamie. And thank you, Trent, for speaking to us. And let's call official end now. Stick around, though, if you want to see what we've just been talking about. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for coming and giving up your Thursday afternoon as well.